This presentation was given at the Natural Heritage and Water Resource System Official Plan Workshop on June 3rd, 2021. Thank you to everyone for registering and attending tonight's workshop on official plan policy updates related to the Natural Heritage System and Water Resource System. As we gather, we are reminded that Guelph is situated on treaty land that is steeped in rich Indigenous history and home to many First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people today. As a city, we have a responsibility for the stewardship of the land on which we live and work. Today, we acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation of the Anishinaabe people on whose traditional territory we are meeting. Guelph joins communities across Canada in mourning the 215 children whose remains have been found at the site of a former residential school in Kamloops, British Columbia. All flags at City of Guelph facilities will be lowered until further notice to honour them. Our thoughts are with the children, their families, their communities, and all who are most affected by this terrible discovery. The agenda for this evening's workshop will include a quick poll followed by a staff presentation. Questions of clarification can then be asked, and we will then proceed into the facilitated discussion portion. The purpose of the workshop tonight is to hear your thoughts on the proposed approaches to updating Guelph's official plan, natural heritage system, and water resource policies in response to changes in provincial legislation, policies, and plans. Please complete the following two polls. On a scale of one to five, how important is the topic of water resources in Guelph to you with one being not at all important and five being very important? On a scale of one to five, how important is the protection of the natural heritage system in Guelph with one being not at all important and five being very important? The official plan is a legal planning document required by the Planning Act it establishes a vision for the future of a municipality and provides policy direction to manage future land use patterns and growth. An official plan primarily deals with how land can be used, whether it should be used for houses, industry, offices, commercial, parks, natural areas, or a mix of uses. It deals with what services like roads and sewers and parks and schools are needed and when and in what order parts of the city should grow. We need to review our official plan because we're required to. The Planning Act requires that we review the official plan every five years, and the last comprehensive review was completed in three phases, concluding in 2017. At the completion of this project, it will be five years since the approval of the last five-year review. Another reason to review the official plan is that in addition to the amount of time that has passed, there have been a number of changes to provincial legislation, policies, and plans which require that the official plan be reviewed and updated in order for it to conform or be consistent with the updated provincial documents. To ensure that we complete this official plan review by July of 2022, the scope of this work includes looking at what is needed to conform to the legislation and plans listed on this slide. Review of Natural Heritage System and Water Resource Policy and Legislation is one component of the Official Plan Review. At this time, it is anticipated that a future Official Plan Amendment or amendments would occur to implement the outcome of ongoing Master Plans, such as the Transportation Master Plan and the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Tonight's workshop will be focusing on the Provincial Policy Statement and a place to grow. Changes in these documents regarding the Natural Heritage System and Water Resources but we wanted to take this opportunity to provide you with a high-level overview of the scope of the provincial changes being considered. Several amendments to the Planning Act have been made since the last official plan review. These amendments have removed heightened density bonusing, modified parkland dedication requirements, introduced community benefit charges, shortened timelines for the processing of certain development applications, and change the types of matters and reasons for appeals to the Local Planning Appeals Tribunal. Our official plan needs to be updated to recognize these changes. The changes to the Provincial Policy Statement were intended to support Ontario's Housing Supply Action Plan, 
and changes to the land use planning system. The changes that were made to the provincial policy statement were intended to encourage development of an increased mix and in supply of housing, protect the environment and public safety, reduce barriers and costs for development, and provide greater predictability, support rural, northern, and indigenous communities, and support the economy and job creation. A significant part of the scope of the official plan review is the city's growth plan conformity work, also known as Shaping Guelph, or the Municipal Comprehensive Official Plan Review. This work has already begun and will continue as outlined in the terms of reference for that project. The recommendations from that body of work will be incorporated into the official plan amendment under the five-year review. The Grand River Source Protection Plan brought policies into effect for the City of Guelph on July 1, 2016, following approval by the province. The development and approval of the plan fulfills requirements under the Provincial Clean Water Act. The plan identifies wellhead protection areas and vulnerabilities, along with corresponding policies for protection of the water quality of Guelph's drinking water supply. Some of these policies are intended to be implemented through planning tools and require updates to the City's official plan in order to support implementation. The amendments to the Ontario Heritage Act are aimed at increasing consistency, transparency, and efficiency in municipal decision-making under the Act to support the Housing Supply Action Plan, while continuing to protect the cultural heritage resources that communities value. Late last year, the official plan review commenced with a special meeting of Council, where the community provided input on the proposed scope of the official plan review. The official plan review policy paper we are discussing tonight outlines changes to the provincial legislation and plans that are being considered through this review. The policy paper also outlines proposed directions on updates that are needed to the official plan to respond to these changes. The policy paper was presented to Council last month in order to begin this round of community engagement. Additional official plan policy is proposed to address updated provincial requirements related to water resources and natural hazards. Refinements to existing policies related to environmental assessments are proposed to improve clarity. Updates to natural heritage system and source water protection policies are also proposed to improve consistency with guiding plans, policies, and legislation. The City's current natural heritage system policies reflect the 2005 Provincial Policy Statement and previous Fisheries Act and Endangered Species Act requirements. Updates to the wording of policies on surface water features and fish habitat and habitat of endangered and threatened species are proposed to reflect the wording used in the Provincial Policy Statement and the requirements of the Federal Fisheries Act and Provincial Endangered Species Act. The City's existing source water protection policies were included through Official Plan Amendment 48 ahead of the completion of the Grand River Source Protection Plan to establish a general implementation framework. The official plan will be updated to enshrine the Grand River Source Protection Plan in policy. The focus of this workshop is on the proposed policy changes related to water resources, natural hazards, and environmental assessments. The Provincial Policy Statement and the Provincial Growth Plan require the identification of a water resource system for long-term protection. Water resource systems consist of groundwater features, hydrologic functions, natural heritage features and areas, and surface water features, including shoreline areas, which are necessary for the ecological and hydrological integrity of the watershed. The province made refinements to provincial policy in 2020 to clarify that watershed planning will inform the identification of water resource systems and the protection, enhancement, or restoration of the quality and quantity of water. It also clarified that planning for large-scale development, including secondary plans within designated greenfield areas, will be informed by sub-watershed plans or an equivalent process. Provincial policy also requires municipalities to protect, improve, or restore the quality and quantity of water using a variety of tools and approaches, including preparing for the impacts of a changing climate to water resource systems at the watershed level and ensuring stormwater management practices 
minimizing water volumes and contaminant loads, and maintain or increase the extent of vegetative and pervious surfaces. Guelph's water resource system will be identified in policy but will not be mapped at this time. Additional and updated information obtained through subwatershed planning is needed to inform mapping. Updating the city's subwatershed studies is a priority action identified in the Natural Heritage Action Plan. City staff initiated work on this action in 2020. Guelph's official plan could be considered consistent with provincial policy, as our existing official plan policies provide a framework for subwatershed planning, climate change, low impact development, and stormwater management. We are proposing to clarify and strengthen these existing policies based on updated information gained through the completion of actions from the Natural Heritage Action Plan, which is intended to implement the policies of the official plan. For example, Guelph-specific low-impact development guidelines are being prepared, which will provide direction on stormwater management requirements relating to water quality and water quantity and the extent of vegetative and pervious services. Provincial policy was also reviewed with respect to flooding hazards. Current official plan policy is consistent with provincial policy relating to flooding hazards. Changes to the flooding hazard policies in the official plan are not proposed or recommended. The official plan needs to be updated to satisfy the minimum requirements of the provincial policy statement and supporting provincial guidelines to incorporate the applicable defined terms from the provincial policy statement. These include hazardous forest types for wildland fire and wildland fire assessment and mitigation standards. The official plan also needs to be updated to introduce policies that direct development away from unsafe areas due to the presence of hazardous forest types for wildland fire and require implementation of appropriate mitigation. The Planning Act requires all municipal public works to conform to the city's official plan, including those completed through an environmental assessment. The proposed policy approach is to update existing policies to specify that essential city infrastructure projects, where subject to an environmental assessment, may be permitted within the natural heritage system. Projects are required to demonstrate no negative impact to the feature or its ecological or hydrological functions. Consideration is also given to requiring projects to provide a net ecological gain to the natural heritage system. In addition to demonstrating no negative impact in support of the natural heritage system objective to maintain, restore, and improve its features and functions. Tonight, we would like your input on the following discussion questions. What are your thoughts on the proposed policy approaches related to water resources and water resource system? Did we get it right? What else should we consider? What are your thoughts on the proposed policy approaches related to natural hazards? Did we get it right? What else should we consider? And what are your thoughts on the proposed policy approaches related to environmental assessments? Did we get that right? What else should we consider? And finally, what are your thoughts on the other proposed policy approaches? Community engagement on the policy paper will continue for the remainder of June. Online feedback can be provided through the haveyoursay.guelph.ca webpage until June 27th. The feedback we received tonight, along with the feedback we received at the workshop on Tuesday, June the 1st, as well as online feedback will inform the preparation of the draft policies and official plan amendment. The draft official plan amendment will be released later this year or early next year for public review and comment. The recommended official plan amendment will be brought forward for a council decision before July 1st of 2022. Thank you for attending this evening's workshop and have a great night.